and welcome to the City Line Book Club. We're here today with Stephen Galloway, author of The Confabulist, which is our latest choice for the City Line Book Club. So he's wonderfully going to answer some of our questions about his novel. So let's get right to it. So we want to know first, just tell us a bit about how this novel came to be. Was writing about magic and Houdini, was that something that you always had an interest in? Or how did this sort of come to be for you? Uh, I always had an interest in, in magic. And I guess, Harry, how do you have an interest in magic <laughs> and not Harry Houdini? Um, for me, what prompted it was wanting to look at how we deal with the fact that our memories aren't tape recorders, that, uh, that our memories are actually stories that our brains have told to us. And from there, how that, how that influences sort of how the characters in the book deal with each other. You know, it's funny you mentioned the memory right off the top because it's something that I really latched onto in the book right from the very beginning with Martin Strauss that memory is almost like the greatest magic trick because it's kind of yeah. how I saw it in there is that, you know, it can be both a trick and not real, a false memory, mm -hmm. and also you can conjure up something so quickly. So I like how you tied those two together. Oh, thank so you. thank you. <laughs> yeah. No, the, the, the processes that a magician uses to form a magic trick are the same processes as your brain uses to form a memory. Um, yeah, it's, it's, rem it's freakily simple. <laughs> Very true, I like that. And a bit more about Houdini. What was it like even just writing about, and not just Houdini, but a couple other characters in the novel as well, uh, real life people and blending mm -hmm. fact and fiction? Can you tell me a bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, Houdini, just as far as historical characters goes, is an extremely rich, rich um, fellow to work with. Mm -hmm. There's, there is a bit of a misperception, I think, in most people's sort of casual um, thinking of Houdini and that they think he was into the occult. Mm -hmm. He was, you know, that he was into the seances and all that mm -hmm. sort of stuff and a believer, mm -hmm. when in fact he was a, he was a very rational skeptic mm -hmm. and, you know, had to appear to have an open mind so that the, the spiritualists and whatnot would talk to him. Mm -hmm. But he was, he was not, you know, a, a guy talking from to people from beyond the grave he he openly ridiculed that sort of thing um just the whole idea of houdini as a person you know he was this uh hungarian jew who emigrated to to the states but then became you know rewrote his myth and he was the the prototypical american boy from appleton wisconsin <laughs> harry houdini not eric weiss from budapest um I just, I really had, I found the way he, in, sen in a sense, constructed his own life as a fiction to begin with, really interesting. No, it's very true. That leaves you with a lot of openings there as well, and particularly in making Harry Houdini a spy, which I thought was really interesting. Why did you decide to go that route with him? Well, there, there's a sort of half-baked theory out there that he was based on his name and initials appearing in the sort of diaries of both the head of Scotland Yard and the head of the Treasury Department, which became the Secret Service, which um, was sort of the US's main spying arm in World War I. So he definitely did have some contact with, with the spy masters of the day. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought, well, all right, then let's say he had lots of contact, because it's a novel. It was fun. <laughs> Fair enough. I really, I thought that was very cool. I mean, he's like just so entrenched in that spy world, double, triple. I thought that was very cool. Cool. Very James Bond-esque twist to a magician. Yes, well, I mean, James Bond is a bit of a magician himself, isn't he? Very true, very true. He makes those <laughs> martinis disappear. <laughs> he does that very well. <laughs> so. On the topic of even of disappearing, I like that the theme of escape ran a lot through the novel, not just obviously in his performances, but through Houdini's own life and Martin Strauss's life as well. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a bit about just running that theme throughout the novel? Well, yeah, they, the escape works kind of differently for, for Martin and for Houdini. For Houdini, escape is his way of, I guess, belonging, right? He, he does these escapes and other people look at them and are inspired by them and it, and it makes him the most famous man on, on the planet, and sort of in doing that, he loses himself, like he accidentally escapes from himself, mm -hmm. whereas Martin has escaped from his life and not always meaning to and not with the positive consequences that Houdini had. Um, he, his escape was maybe one more out of cowardice and, and fear. Um, 
And ultimately for him, not, not such a good thing, probably. No, it doesn't seem like it. We won't spoil anything. It no. doesn't seem like it. Uh, and I guess the last thing I wanted to ask you about was just a bit about the structure of the novel in how you jump a lot between timelines. Sometimes, even within one chapter of Houdini, a lot of times we're flipping back and forth in time. Yeah. I'm just wondering a bit about why you decided to tell it in such a nonlinear fashion and how that was writing that and keeping that all straight for yourself. Uh, writing it, I wrote, there, so there's three different timelines. There's Martin sitting on his bench, and then there's Martin sort of back in the 20s, tracking, tracking old Harry down. And then there's the Harry Houdini sections, and I wrote all of them separately. So it was, it was, it wasn't too hard to to keep it straight in my own head, and I had a big chart anyway. <laughs> um, I think I, memory is non isn't linear. Memory jumps around and skips around, and you know you're here and then you're here. So I sort of wanted the the book to feel like a memory, um, in the way that you approach it, mm -hmm. you know, a scene. And then another scene, and it's it's a little bit chronological, but not yeah, yeah, not not so much. No, I like that. I hadn't thought of it with the memory connection there, but mm. that's very cool. That's well, very cool. Well, thank, thank you. you so much, Stephen. Thank you. And I hope you are all enjoying reading along with us, The Confabulist, and stay tuned for more great uh, behind-the-scenes features with Stephen Galloway. Thank mm -hmm. you again. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs>